way longer because we will speak about uh, cases. Uh, we have a database of cases uh, connected with cyberbullying, uh, uh, cases which are uh, connected with uh, young people, groups of people, but also with the teachers. So uh, we will speak about cyberbullying focused on uh, children uh, in a cases uh, Gislan Raza Aka, Star Wars Kid, uh, Ryan Patrick Halligan story, uh, Megan Meyer story, Anna Holman story, Amanda Todd. Uh, we will also speak about uh, thematic groups on internet. Uh, uh, we will speak uh, and discuss about sexual oriented groups, uh, so called like spreaders. Uh, we will describe some situation uh, of cyberbullying focused on uh, teachers. Uh, we will describe the phenomenon uh, confession. We will talk about uh, pranks, uh, about individual cases. So you see that uh, we have a lot of work before us. So uh, let's start. First story and uh, first case of cyberbullying, uh, which was published uh, in, uh, in the media, uh, was a story of uh, Gislan Raza, a Star Wars kid from Canada, uh, 2003. Gislan, uh, it was a young boy, uh, 13 years old, uh, from Canada, recorded himself uh, reenacting a Star Wars battle scene. Uh, his classmates stole his recording and uh, posted it on the internet for amusement of other uh, people. Uh, there were very popular peer-to-peer -peer networks, for example, Kaza, and the file with the video was spreading and sharing across internet services. Uh, it was uh, copied, it was uh, edit edited, and uh, there were a lot of uh, mutations of the original video. The recording uh, went viral. It was edited many times and many websites and blogs uh, targeting the boys brought it. Uh, Gislan's fans also uh, wrote a petition to Star Wars creators for him uh, to be included in one of the episodes. He has been parodied in a number of television shows, uh, for example in South Park, American Dead and other, other websites, other, other movies uh, and uh, if, if you look on the consequences uh, Gislan suffered a mental breakdown and his road to recovery was very very long. So uh, we can look on the on the video. On the left side of screen you see the video of uh, which uh, Gislan uh, recorded uh, at school. So, and if you look on the right side, uh, there is a modified recording uh, uh, which uh, used the original video of Gislan and uh, the, the video is called uh, Drunken Jedi. So there is modification uh, of, of the original and you will see As you see, uh, the, the video is uh, is a full of uh, effects of, of lights, of lasers, and these videos are share, are spreading and uh, sharing across the internet. And this video went to viral, and Gislan became one of the earliest and highest profile victims of massive uh, cyberbullying. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Gislan told, uh, for example, what I saw was mean, it was violent, uh, people were telling me to commit uh, suicide. And if you look uh, on, on examples from the movies, on the left side there is a picture from uh, South Park and on the right side there is an extract from, from uh, comics. So, another very, very uh, intensive and bad story uh, connected with bullying, traditional bullying and uh, cyberbullying uh, was a story of Ryan Patrick Halligan from the USA 2003. Ryan, 13 years old, uh, was a victim of uh, physical bullying. Uh, he became a target for his classmates for his uh, developmental and learning problems. 
he has the problems with the motor skills, with the speech, with learning disabilities. And uh, in order to defend himself, he began to learn kickbox with his father. Eventually, he uh, stood up uh, to his bully and they became friends for a while, but uh, then the bully uh, called Ryan gay. It's very, very um, intimate or it, it's uh, uh, a very, very sensitive for children if you say that someone is a homosexual, if someone is a gay, and it was very, very uh, bad for Ryan uh, because Ryan doesn't know what to do. Uh, to uh, get rid of, of uh, such reputation, uh, Ryan established uh, an internet relation uh, through instant messaging with a popular girl from school, Ashley. But the problem was uh, that uh, when he tried uh, talking to her in person, she laughed at him and called him loser. Uh, he then learned uh, uh, that the girl was only using their relationship for amusement and uh, she forwarded uh, their uh, intimate uh, messages uh, to other classmates and they all made fun of him. They called him that you are gay, you are homosexual, uh, you are predator, you are pedophile. So uh, he needs to, to fight with uh, this reputation and uh, after Ashley had uh, called him a loser, uh, Ryan said, uh, it's uh, girls like you who make me want to kill myself. On October uh, in 2003, uh, Halligan's father was uh, away on a business trip and early in the morning when the other family members were still sleeping, uh, Ryan hanged uh, himself uh, with a bathrobe uh, tie that belonged to his older sister who later found his body. So if we look on the consequences, uh, Ryan hanged uh, himself. After, the, after that, his father, John Halligan, Halligan uh, started uh, to make a provincial campaign focused on cyberbullying. He also prepared a law and made uh, special programs uh, focused uh, on uh, prevention of cyberbullying and other risky behavior on the internet. And there is a website, uh, ryanpatrickhalligan.org, uh, and we will look uh, on, the, on the video from this website. A man traveled more than a thousand miles to be in our community tonight to tell his son's story, and it's one he hopes will help another family avoid tragedy. My name is John Halligan. I lost my son Ryan to suicide on October 7, 2003. I've been an advocate for suicide prevention and bullying prevention ever since his death. Kids started teasing him in fifth grade. To his parents' surprise, Ryan said he was actually becoming friends with the kid who bullied him, but that friendship was quickly betrayed. He spread a rumor around the school and online that my son was gay. Ryan started getting vulgar, homophobic emails, but didn't tell his parents. He also began long online chats with a girl he liked. But when Ryan approached her in person, he discovered it was all a big setup. Humiliated, Ryan said, it's girls like you that make me want to kill myself. The following month, emotionally battered by bullies and undiagnosed depression, Ryan hung himself in the bathroom of his home. Unfortunately, a lot of parents, and I made this mistake too, is we're afraid to go down this path with them because we don't want to encourage the thought, or we don't want to encourage the thought any further. So an instinctive response to this by a parent is typically, you know, a hug and a pep talk and, you know, try to change the subject. That is not the response that we need to have. Also, teachers are observing young people throughout the school day and picking up on little signs, things like they're perhaps looking a bit more sad than usual or they're, they're not doing their homework uh, as diligently as they normally do or they're not participating in class as much as they normally participate. You know, these, these shifts or changes in their personality could be a warning sign that they're, they're starting to feel very depressed and perhaps even suicidal. The mission of Ryan's story is just to visit as many schools as I can throughout the United States uh, to tell his life story and to hopefully inspire young people to either stop bullying or stand up to bullying or ask for help if they are being bullied.
If it's too hard to look at your parents about stuff like this, I beg you to find another adult you can talk to. It could be your school counselor, it could be a teacher, a family friend, a relative, but please go to that adult and just tell them straight up, you don't feel good inside and let them help you. The goal is to try to reach young people who perhaps are feeling the way Ryan felt and get them to make a better decision than the one that Ryan made. The most significant outcomes of my presentations have been, and it occurred at the very first time I did it, and this is why I keep doing it, is um, I had a student who had heard me speak as a 12th grader at my very first presentation at a high school in Vermont, and uh, six months later she emailed me from her dorm room at college and went on to tell me that she was she was changed by Ryan's story and that she had felt an obligation after my presentation to go up and apologize to peers that she had bullied back in middle school. If Ryan was alive today, he would tell young people, do not do this. I have no doubt that he would take this back. Um, you know, Ryan, and I feel and believe this in my heart, he has seen the aftermath and he's seen the, the devastation of his family. So, if you want uh, to know more information about Ryan, uh, let's visit problem. this uh, website. Uh, another case we will comment uh, uh, will be a story of Megan Meyer. Uh, Megan Meyer was born in uh, 1992 in O'Fallon, uh, Missouri, in the USA. And from the third grade in 2001 and 2, after she had told her mother she had wanted to kill her herself, uh, Megan had been under the care of psychiatrist. Uh, she had been diagnosed with uh, uh, defi uh, attention deficit disorder, uh, depression, uh, self esteem issues uh, regarding her race and many many other uh, psych psychical uh, problems. For uh, several weeks uh, Megan uh, was on cloud nine about her virtual love for a boy uh, Josh Evans the, uh, she had uh, met this boy online on uh, MySpace. Then, uh, out of the blue, the boy started sending her hateful messages, uh, telling her how gross she is and uh, how the world uh, would be a better place without her. Consequences, Megan hanged herself. Uh, what is fascinating or what is uh, uh, very, very important uh, during investigation, it was found that in reality the boy was actually uh, Megan's former friend's mother, a 50 years old Laurie Drew, who wanted to take revenge on Megan for denigrating her daughter. Um, after Meyer's death, uh, according to the uh, incident, Laurie Drew removed the fake Josh Evans account and commanded all who knew about the fake account to keep her mouth shut. Uh, in uh, December 2007, uh, Missouri prosecutors announced uh, that uh, they wouldn't charge uh, Drew in connection with Miles' death. Uh, Prosecutor uh, Jack Banas uh, stated uh, there was not enough evidence to bring charges. So if you look on the case, we see that uh, the offender or attacker uh, couldn't be just a child, but also an adult person. But uh, in the most situation or in the most incidents uh, in a cyberbullying, uh, the attacker is a child, student, someone uh, from the group of friends of, of the child, from the school, classmates, but uh, uh, not adult people. If you look to the Europe, uh, there is a story uh, about Anna Holman from Poland, 2006. Five uh, classmates uh, subjected Anna, 14 years old, to uh, sexual bullying uh, in front uh, of the whole class. They tore her dress off of her and pretended to rape her. Uh, the incident was happened at school, at the school class, uh, when the teacher was 20 minutes out of the class uh, on the order of uh, director and the children were alone in a classroom. Trying to defend herself, Anna tried to hide under the, under the bench, uh, screaming and crying uh, to let her go. Um, several classmates tried to uh, stand up for her, but uh, they were weaker than the attackers 
and the other students just uh, watched with interest uh, because they they thought it uh, was great fun. Uh, attackers were recording the whole situation on their phones and uh, threatened to post it on the internet, which uh, they later did. Anna finally managed to free herself and run home. She didn't tell uh, anyone about the bullying and teacher didn't receive many information about the incident uh, because uh, students didn't speak about uh, it too much. Next day after incident, Anna uh, committed suicide. Uh, a police investigation at the school revealed uh, that uh, this was not first attack. The same boys attacks her repeatedly for several weeks uh, since uh, she didn't want to date one of them. So you see the motive revenge. Again, revenge. Uh, she doesn't want to, to date with one, one a boy. So the act of revenge uh, was, was uh, this situation. Uh, Anna's friends said uh, she was panicked by the boys, uh, which was also uh, why she hadn't reported previous attacks. Um, according to her parents, uh, she was quiet, uh, she was closed and very shy girl. So if you look on consequences, Anna hanged herself on, uh, on a jump uh, rope. The last case I'd like to uh, speak about in the context of uh, uh, children's cyberbullying is a story of uh, Amanda Todd from Canada, uh, 2012. Amanda uh, Todd uh, was a 15-year-old uh, Canadian student and a victim of cyberbullying who hanged herself at her home. Uh, before her death, Todd uh, posted a video on YouTube uh, in, in uh, which she used a series of flashcards to tell her experience of uh, being blackmailed into exposing her uh, breasts via webcam and of being bullied and uh, psychically assaulted. What we see is example uh, of cyberbullying connected with sexting, with some intimate material, with sharing of, of this kind of uh, content in online services. Uh, Amanda used video chat to meet new people over the internet and received uh, uh, compliments on her looks. A stranger uh, convinced Todd to bear her breast on camera and uh, there, is a exp uh, there is a phenomenon known as uh, capping. It's a short from uh, screen capturing. So uh, Amanda uh, show, uh, show it uh, to him and uh, uh, she, she record it and make uh, snapshots of uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, breasts. And now if you have uh, this, the content you can blackmail someone. He later uh, blackmailed her by uh, threatening to uh, give the topless photo to her friends unless she gave him a show. Uh, she refused, uh, so he'd find her classmates on Facebook and uh, send them to uh, the photograph. Uh, to cope with the anxiety, uh, Todd uh, descending into drugs and alcohol and ill-advised flirtation and, and sex. Mm, she attempts suicide uh, a few times before uh, finally succeeding. So if you look on the consequences, it's, it's the same as before, uh, Amanda hanged herself. What is necessary and very important to say, a very dangerous form of cyberbullying is cyberbullying combined with the sexting and sexual content. Uh, the most uh, cases of this type of uh, cyberbullying are criminal. For example, blackmailing, uh, sextortion, sharing of uh, pornography and other other, other crime. Uh, so uh, look on the side, uh, a, a lot of situations you'll see are connected with, with uh, children because sexting is, is uh, uh, very uh, very frequently form of, of risky behavior on internet. So, uh, more about this topic uh, will be in other lessons, we will sp speak, uh, speak about sexting, uh, we will speak about child grooming, so uh, we will speak about these situations and the process of uh, manipulation and blackmailing in the next lessons. What is really important to say, uh, I demonstrate to you some cases with uh, bad end, uh, where was a suicide of children in the end, but uh, it's not typical. 
Uh, in the most cases of cyberbullying, there is no suicide at the end. Uh, the most forms of cyberbullying are connected with verbal aggression, just a verbal aggression, nothing else. No sexual content, no no uh, physical attacks, not, nothing, nothing from uh, this this sort of uh, risky behavior. But uh, cyberbullying is an accelerator of existing problems. So if you have uh, some psychiatric diagnosis, if you have problems with self-esteem, uh, if, if you have uh, some types of uh, anxiety and uh, stress and uh, these kinds of, of problems, uh, uh, cyberbullying could uh, accelerate, uh, accelerate it and uh, you can do uh, do suicide, but it's not a typical. It's not a typical for cyberbullying. Yeah. So uh, the most cases of cyberbullying ha has or have uh, the the good end. And now we will speak about cyberbullying, uh, uh, which is focused on groups. So we will not speak about individuals. We will not speak about uh, uh, cases of uh, concrete. Uh, uh, concrete uh, children, but we will speak about uh, attacks on groups. Uh, cyberbullying could be targeted no, not just on the individuals, but also on the groups of people. And on the social networks, we can find various uh, uh, thematic groups focused uh, on people uh, with uh, different types of uh, disabilities, uh, with different religions, different uh, ages or groups uh, uh, inappropriately commenting on uh, various tra uh, tragedies, tragic events. Uh, in this context we speak uh, about uh, hate speech or hate crime uh, and in uh, many cases the hate speech focused on groups of people is uh, criminal. In uh, recent years, uh, hate speech uh, has uh, focused uh, primarily on, uh, on Muslims and refugees. Uh, but uh, if we look on the internet, for example, on a social network, uh, Facebook, uh, we will find many other groups uh, which are focusing, for example, on autists. Uh, uh, there is a group uh, we are for killing autists. Uh, on, on elderly people, uh, uh, people above 50 uh, have no right to life. Uh, uh, Cyberbullying groups uh, focused, uh, for example, on, on fat girls. Uh, uh, there was some request or recommendation. Uh, try to record uh, fat girls uh, in your region, in, in, uh, in between your friends, in your schools, and share it with other. We will comment it and we will make a hating. So there is a group. Uh, day of bullying fat girls and there are also groups uh, focused on tra tragedy tragedies and uh, for example we wish death uh, to more hockey uh, players and the special really special kind of uh, uh, these groups are uh, thematic sexual groups uh, in the Czech Republic we have a special uh, name or a special title for these groups uh, like spreaders it's it's the it's the same as a as a, a thematic sexual groups focused on a, on a girls. Uh, in uh, the online environment, especially on the social networks, uh, we have we have find a lot of groups uh, uh, which are focused on revenge porn. Maybe you know uh, this this term revenge porn. Uh, in the Czech Republic, uh, we we call it Alex Perez group, and uh, uh, there are for example groups. Uh, Alex spreaders from Liberec, Alex spreaders from Praha, Alex spreaders from Budovice and Alex spreaders from Přerov. Uh, the names are the cities in the Czech Republic and in these groups uh, there is uh, content uploaded uh, by girls ex friend Especially there are uh, intimate uh, photos, intimate uh, videos, uh, in in intimate uh, um, other intimate stuff uh, and the users of these groups are commenting uh, these these uh, these uh, photos or these materials a lot of content uh, is illegal uh, there are also child pornography and in cooperation with police we uh, we uh, removed from uh, social networks more than 200 uh, groups uh, focused on revenge porn in the Czech Republic in one month so it's a phenomenon uh, which is also in other countries. I think maybe in your country there is uh, something similar where, where uh, 
the ex ex boys or ex friends uh, are sharing uh, this this content uh, uh, by by uh, by uh, uh, your ex wives or ex ex uh, girls. And now we will focus on uh, cyberbullying of teachers or cyberbullying focused on teachers. Uh, in the Czech Republic and maybe in other countries, there is a phenomenon called uh, confession. Uh, confession uh, it's a part of name of an, an anonymous uh, groups. Uh, for example, confession of I don't know, confessions of Prague, uh, confession of uh, primary school at Brno, confession of uh, secondary school at uh, Olomouc, uh, confession of uh, uh, school from from Ostrava maybe. In the name of the groups, there is uh, there is uh, some organization. Uh, there is, for example, school or there is uh, some other institution. And inside these groups is very often uh, a very often aggressive uh, content about teachers, about classmates. There is bad conversation, and uh, on, on your screen you see some examples uh, of. Uh, a group a confession focused on people from Ostrava. It's it's a special group from one one uh, middle school in Ostrava, and there are some names. For example, Dubek, Kubičkova, uh, Šmídová, Novák, uh, and these names are teachers from the school. And if you look uh, on the communication, we see, for example, I have the urk to uh, throw Dubek uh, out of the window. Uh, uh, sometimes I want to throw a brick uh, between uh, Kubičkova's eyes. Uh, I, I would uh, cancel those seven lessons in a row. It's totally fucking useless. And uh, to top it off, uh, you have uh, for for four lessons in one day that all count uh, Schmidova. Uh, Novak is an old uh, hobo, and other and other vulgarism and violence against uh, teachers. So this is example of, of a group uh, focused on the teachers with the name Confession. Uh, the, the posts are anonymous and there is uh, one moderator. You can contact the moderator and uh, he will uh, write what you, what you want in this uh, group. Pranks. Mm. In the Czech Republic and other countries from Europe and U the USA and, and other countries, uh, uh, there are pranks. Uh, pranks, uh, it's a kind of joke. Uh, pranks, uh, it, it could be a good joke, but also the bad joke. And uh, in the Czech Republic, we had a special competition organized by radio station Fine Radio. And it, it was prank. Uh, prank your teacher and win a skiing trip worth uh, 75,000 Czech crowns. So uh, there was a motivation to make pranks on a teacher. And the principle was very, very simple. Uh, prank a teacher at school, out of the school, uh, record a video and win a money uh, for, for a trip for a skiing. Yeah? And after that the, the uh, competition was, was opened and was shared across the internet uh, the students and pupils uh, start to record uh, teachers at schools and try to make pranks on, on them. And on the slide you see some examples of pranks from this competition. First one. In an unguarded moment, uh, pupils uh, sprinkle sleeping powder in uh, their teacher's coffee. Uh, the teacher uh, falls asleep. Uh, the pupils bring her in front uh, of the school building and uh, wake uh, her up by blowing a vuvuzela. Everyone is lying uh, at the teacher, uh, thin ends. Another one. A pupil comes to fetch a teacher uh, saying that uh, boys uh, in the classroom had a fight. Uh, the teacher runs to the classroom and sees a pupil sitting on the floor and covered in blood. She exclaims, uh, what has happened? Uh, at the, that moment, pupils pour water on her and start lowing. Now, a wet teacher lost with the pupils and the thin ends. 
the students uh, start to create a lot of lot of videos uh, with the blood, uh, with with some incidents, uh, uh, with murders, with killing, with the knives, uh, with attacks of clowns, uh, with many many situation, and uh, a lot of a lot of teachers doesn't know about the com about the competition, and uh, uh, there was a hunt on on, a, on a teachers at schools. So uh, this is something between normal classical cyberbullying and a prank and uh, I don't know how, what's your opinion on, on this problem but uh, from my point of view it's a kind of cyberbullying because we are motivating uh, children to, to uh, hurt or to humiliate uh, teachers through the competition. Yeah. So this is this is special kind of uh, risky behavior connected with with uh, uh, bullying of uh, teachers or bullying targeted on a, on a teachers. And now it's a time for some individual cases uh, from Czech Republic and uh, foreign countries. Uh, uh, I try to um, present you a case uh, Jiří Bacholík from Železný Brod. Jiří Bacholík it's a name and a, uh, it's a first name and a surname of uh, former principal uh, of the primary school in Železný Brod. What's happened? Uh, Jiří Pacholík uh, slapped a 15 years old uh, pupil uh, on the head after a verbal conflict. If you look uh, on the on the screen, uh, there is a photo from the video, and the student told to 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 the principal, uh, "Why should I care? Why should I keep my things in order? You bastard!" And after that, the student told uh, the, the teacher, "You bastard!" The teacher slapped him. But uh, the pupils classmates recorded the scene on their uh, phones and uh, put it on the internet, on YouTube. And the case uh, was uh, heavily publicized and all uh, nationwide media reported about it. The teacher received hundreds of hate messages. Uh, there was a lot of uh, articles about him, about this situation. And there were articles reacted on a, on a slapping of, of uh, uh, children at schools. It's, it's not normal to, to slap a child. But if you look uh, on, on the uh, verbal aggression of a student, uh, I understand uh, why the situation starts and uh, what, what's happened. But. Uh, the media published a lot of articles uh, about this this story or this incident. Uh, you, you can look, for example, on Jablonecki Denik. It's a newspaper from uh, Jablonec region in the Czech Republic. Uh, about uh, 20, 20, 100,000 readers. And if you look on the title, uh, school principal slaps pupils. Uh, just the broad, uh, there is a video on YouTube.com uh, that was taken by pupils of uh, primary school Palechowska in Železny Brod. In the video, the principal first shows a, a pupil and then slaps him on the, on the head. And you see a photo and under the photo is written future, uh, future first graders and at uh, enrollment. Do the parents know what kind of principal the school has? And if we look uh, to communication uh, uh, under the under the um, article, uh, there were hundreds or thousands uh, hating in the comments. Uh, for demonstration, I copied for you two comments, and uh, we will focus on the second one. Uh, uh, there is a bolded uh, bolded part. Uh, I think uh, that uh, the only one who should have been beat is the principal. I really don't know, uh, since we are porky, concede all old uh, cultures uh, dare to act like that. This is not about uh, whatever he's a teacher, neither it is about uh, whether the pupils tell his parents that will uh, then deal with it. No. While it is true that there should be some level of respect towards th the teacher, uh, it's also true that they get money for it, so they don't do their job from the goodness as their hearts. And as a fair person, I would advise the, the pupil to respond in the same way. Why should he let a stranger beat him? And other and other comments uh, about this situation. So if I go back uh, uh, um, consequences or the end of the case, uh, after the case went viral, the principal uh, committed suicide. So, 
uh, we can see that that uh, uh, the cyberbullying targeted on, on teachers is accelerated uh, by media. If the story goes to, to media, to, on, on the internet, on the newspapers, on the portals and uh, to the television or broadcasting, uh, it's, it's a really bigger problem because hate uh, speech and uh, hating uh, targeted on teacher is very intensive and uh, could be ended uh, by the suicide of, of a teacher. But we have also uh, stories with, with a good end. For example, uh, this is a case from primary school Matice Školska in uh, České Budějovice, Czech Republic uh, 2014. Uh, two pupils of the ninth grade uh, made uh, one lesson uh, very difficult for the, their teacher. One recited a vulgar poem and the other filmed her reaction on his mobile phone. Afterwards, uh, they posted uh, the video on YouTube. The principal, Jana Rychlíková, uh, punished uh, the two offenders by a lower mark from conduct and the class teachers uh, reprimand. Parents of uh, the attackers uh, demanded uh, the punishment be revoked and the principal be removed from office, but uh, their request was denied. So this is a situation with, with uh, we can say a good good end or good uh, good finishing uh, because uh, uh, the the video wasn't spread on a YouTube was was removed very fast and uh, there was a punishment of, of the the offenders. If you look uh, uh, to foreign countries, there is a situation or incident from uh, Scotland. Uh, in Scotland, students of, of a school in uh, Cumberland recorded a lesson uh, during which one of the students pulled down their teacher's trousers and the video was then posted on YouTube.com. So it's it's example of, uh, example of the situation uh, which is recording. We have a problem uh, with the mobile phones across Europe and uh, uh, we, uh, if, you, if you look on the population, uh, there are two parts. One part uh, uh, want to deny mobile phones at school. One, one part uh, want to allow mobile phone, phones at school and the discussion is, is uh, very long and uh, uh, very intensive uh, between school and parents, between teachers, between child and teachers. So it, it's very complicated. Uh, uh, it's very complicated with mobile phones at school. If you look uh, to, uh, for example, Ru Russia, uh, there is a, a quite old case uh, from 2010 it's extreme situation. It's it's not typical situation, but it's extreme situation uh, from the school uh, where the 73-year-old uh, PI teacher uh, was working at school uh, with the students, uh, but uh, the students uh, tried to to torture her. Uh, they uh, kick in her. They're dragging on the floor and everything they recorded, uh, recorded. The problem was that because she was quite old, uh, she uh, had uh, problems uh, with uh, memory and uh, uh, ha she, she very, very often uh, uh, lost uh, her, her memories and uh, she didn't remember what's happened the day before. And the students uh, find that uh, she has a problem and uh, uh, prepare a special websites uh, where uh, the, the videos uh, uh, of, of uh, uh, lessons of uh, PI uh, were uploaded and shared uh, with other people, other students. It was a very bad situation. And uh, if uh, the people are asked uh, to the teacher uh, if she can comment the situation, uh, she uh, she burst uh, uh, into tears and claimed that the children uh, would never do something like uh, this to her. Yeah. So if you want to more about this story, uh, try to look uh, the keywords: uh, Shelekhov, uh, uh, 70 year or so teacher cyberbullying, and uh, uh, you will know more about this uh, quite long story. And uh, if you look, for example, to Serbia, 2009, 
nine uh, there was a situation from school uh, um, at uh, one secondary technical school a pupil assaulted a teacher who refused to uh, give him a class book uh, the student apparently wanted to cover up his missed lessons so uh, it, it was uh, it was important for for him uh, to stall a class book to to uh, delete delete uh, some recordings uh, from from the, the class book uh, while defending the class book the teacher hit the pupil so he responded by hitting her uh, with fists uh, other pupils uh, watched without uh, lifting a finger and they recorded everything on their mobile phones and after a long while several of them uh, stood up to break the fight the pupils then posted the recording on the internet so these situations are across countries and maybe in your country you have some some examples of uh, um, intensive cyberbullying targeted on on uh, teachers uh, if we speak about uh, cyberbullying uh, targeted on teachers, maybe we can say something about some data or, or some research uh, which is focusing on, on this issue. Uh, in 2016, we made a special kind of research, a national research of cyberbullying of uh, Czech teachers. And uh, that the, the research involved a total of uh, 5,000 primary and secondary school teachers from uh, all regions of the Czech Republic and uh, the research has shown that uh, a fifth of respondents about 21 percent has experienced uh, cyber attacks on uh, their person however cyberbullying during the last uh, 12 months uh, so the last year lasting our one week was confirmed only uh, by three three or, or four percent of the total number of respondents so uh, um, most often the cyber cyber attacks were committed by students in 33 percent of attacks and uh, if you look on the number of cyberbullying it's not so bad because three three percent of teachers is it's quite low, low it's it's quite low, low number but if we look on the contact uh, with cyber attack uh, with, with cyber aggression 21 to 21 percent of teachers uh, ha have uh, this experience if you want to know more about this research, uh, look on the on the link uh, above uh, uh, the the slide, and you will find a complete uh, paper with with many other information about uh, cyberbullying focused on uh, teachers. That's all for now, uh, and we will continue with with the lesson uh, with some recommendation and hints. Thank you for your time, and have a nice day.